At number 10, Hugh Grant. You don't really hear too much about Hugh Grant these days, so when I found out that he was banned from somewhere, I was actually pretty shocked. He was banned from The Daily Show after having a really bad interview that affected the show's host. Jon Stewart, the former host of The Daily Show, said in an interview that Hugh Grant was the absolute worst guest he'd ever had on the show. He spoke about how when Hugh was on to promote his film Did You Hear About The Morgans, Hugh was making a huge scene backstage and was really mean and annoying to the people who were working on set. Apparently, he was allegedly going around saying that he had better places to be. He also got really upset about the clip that they played from the film saying quote, What is that clip? It is a terrible clip. To which John replied telling Hugh to make a better movie. You could really tell that John was fed up with Hugh and his attitude on the show. John went on to say that because of his poor experience with Hugh, he would never have him back on his show. At number 9, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin is known for being pretty outspoken and controversial at times and it's because of her antics that she's been banned from just about every talk show. Because of her unpredictable actions, use of crude language, and her problematic past, she isn't welcome on shows like The View, The Today Show, Ellen, Regis and Kelly, Jay Leno, Letterman, and many, many others. She's racked up a lot of these bans over the years, but some new ones like being fired from CNN come from the backlash that she gained after the Donald Trump incident where she posed with a fake bloodied model of Donald Trump's head. She's been known to ruffle people's feathers on live TV and pull stunts that are inappropriate for broadcast. Though she's been banned from certain TV shows, I really think that people just want her banned from the media in general because of her actions. At number 8, Harmony Corinne. I think it's common knowledge, at least to most people, that when you're a guest somewhere, you should try and be on your best behavior. Most people follow this unspoken rule, but many others don't, especially celebrities as we will see throughout this list. One person who really should have tried to behave themselves is director Harmony Corinne, who's best known for the movie Spring Breakers. There was once a time when Harmony made a number of appearances on The Late Show with David Letterman in the mid to late 90s. This was also during a time when Harmony was reportedly on a lot of Though he was a frequent guest on the show, his appearances just stopped all of a sudden and no one really knew why until 2013 when Letterman revealed the truth as to why the director was banned from coming on the show. Apparently, Letterman caught the director going through Meryl Streep's purse one time and that was just the last straw for the late night host. When talking about this fateful event, Letterman said, quote, I went upstairs to greet Meryl Streep and welcome her to the show. I knocked on the door and she wasn't there. I looked around and found Harmony going through her purse. True story. And so I said, that's it, put her things back in her bag and then get out." End quote. After that, Harmony was no longer welcome on the show and has not been back since. At number 7, Bobcat Goldthwaite. I think that this goes without saying, but don't go setting fire to random things. I know Adele said set fire to the rain, but that was just a metaphor. Clearly though, one guest on Jay Leno didn't quite get the memo because they ended up setting a fire during their interview on The Late Night Show. Back in 1994, actor Bobcat Goldthwaite was a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and during his guest appearance, the actor decided to randomly set fire to his chair. At the time, Jay thought that this was just a spontaneous bit, but in reality, Bobcat came prepared for this as he brought lighter fluid and a lighter that was hidden up his sleeve. Luckily, the other guest who was there that night, Lauren Hutton, was quick on her feet and doused the flames with a cup of water. Jay, understandably, was very unhappy with all this and banned Bobcat from the show. Not only that, but the actor was also charged with arson for his stunt and was ordered to pay over $3,300 in fines, some of which went towards replacing the chair that he set fire to. Not too sure why he decided to make this interview go up in flames like that, but at least he won't be able to pull that stunt again. At least not with Jay. At number 6, Dax Shepard. Actor and comedian Dax Shepard has been very open about his struggles with substance abuse for some time now. He's opened up about some of the lowest points in his career that was caused by his substance abuse, including one time that got him banned from a late night show. Dax told the story about how he was once preparing to be on Late Night with Conan O'Brien in 2004, but when he was doing the pre-interview, he blacked out. Dax didn't remember any of the pre-interview where he was supposed to go over the talking points for the evening and by the time his real interview started, he was so lost. He went into detail saying, quote, I show up on the show and I don't know what he's talking about. I can tell he's queuing me up for stories I've told, but I don't know any of the stories, end quote. Because of how badly he messed up his interview, he was banned from the show for a few years until he got sober. Years later, he was welcomed back on the show and all was forgiven, but it was still a low point for the actor. At number five, Jay Leno. This next ban was caused by one serious feud between Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien. Because both men were talented late night hosts, there were a lot of pitches from different networks trying to poach one or the other to take over talk shows and whatnot. Well, things got kind of heated when Conan was promised the hosting gig for The Tonight Show when Jay's contract was up. As you would imagine, Jay didn't take the news very well and so he decided to start his own show, The Jay Leno Show, which aired before Conan's. Well, when neither of their shows were bringing in good ratings, the network reshuffled the time slots, gave Conan's slot to Jay, and bumped Conan's show back half an hour. Conan didn't like that, took a payout, and The Tonight Show fell back into Jay's hands. Later 
later on when asked if he would have Jay on an episode of his show, Conan shut that down, essentially saying that Jay would have been banned from his program. There was just a lot of bitterness between them and the water under that bridge has certainly dried up. At number 4, Gary Busey. A lot of people enjoy their personal space. I know that there are many people who love getting close to others and who are very physical people, but you know, not everybody likes that. Getting upset when someone invades your personal space without permission is pretty understandable and this notion is what got Gary Busey banned from the Howard Stern Show. Back in 2001, actor Gary Busey was on the Howard Stern Show and seemed to have ignored the notion of personal space and that rubbed Howard the wrong way. While on the show, the actor picked up Howard's co-host Robin Quivers, giving him a big bear hug and even chased Howard around the studio trying to wrestle him. Howard really didn't like what Gary was doing that day and so he promptly banned him from coming back on the show. When Gary explained the motives behind his actions, he blamed it on his quote, 13 separate personalities. He continued to say that he was just really excitable that day, but that wasn't a good enough excuse to get him back onto the show until 2017 when he was invited to do an audio only interview with Howard. At number 3, Howard Stern. But speaking of Howard Stern, he himself has been banned from a late night show. Apparently he and Jay Leno have had beef ever since Howard's 1995 appearance on The Tonight Show. This appearance was pretty chaotic. Howard entered onto the show with two women in bikinis and prompted the women to start kissing each other on air. On top of that, Howard kept speaking over Jay and other guests while on the show as well. Jay was apparently so fed up with Howard and his antics that he nearly walked off set and was so mad about the way that the show turned out that evening that he later called into Howard's show to say that he had quote, gone beyond the acceptable standards. After that, Howard was banned and he and Jay have had beef ever since. At number 2, Donald Trump. Now to find out that Donald Trump has been banned from any kind of talk show really isn't all that surprising. So many hosts from various shows have banned the former president, but this next ban is a little juicier because it kind of involves some beef between the Donald and late night host Seth Meyers. In 2016, the late night talk show host issued a ban against Donald Trump in retaliation for Trump having revoked Seth's Washington Post credentials. Though it was an official ban, it was also done as a joke since Seth already knew that Donald would never be on a show anyway, but it was about the principle. In a joke statement to Donald, Seth said quote, We instituted this ban despite the fact that he's never been here or asked to be here or would never be caught dead here. I just think that it takes an amazing amount of courage on our part. So the ball is in your court, Donald. Either rescind your Washington Post ban or you're not allowed to appear on the show you have no interest in appearing on. Although maybe now that you can't have it, you're changing your mind. End quote. And finally, at number one, Oprah Winfrey. This last ban seems to have been more so self-imposed. After making an appearance on David Letterman's show in 1989, Oprah Winfrey issued a self-imposed ban refusing to go back on Letterman's show. After what she experienced on the show, Oprah and Letterman seem to have had some kind of feud going on, though it was more low-key than others. As for what happened to cause this self-imposed ban, well, Oprah finally opened up about the event that caused this back in 2013, saying, quote, It was a terrible experience for me. The guy in the audience started yelling, get her Dave. You were sort of baiting the audience and there were a bunch of drunk guys down the front. I was trying to mitigate the whole thing, it felt so uncomfortable for me. I didn't want to have that experience again." End quote. Basically, she was just really uncomfortable on the show and wanted to forget about the event, hence her minor beef with the late night host, and she just didn't want a repeat of that unpleasant experience. At number 10, Vivica A. Fox. You know, you don't always have to like everybody. It's okay not to be the biggest fan of someone, but for the sake of appearances, it might be a good idea to at least pretend like this person person doesn't bother you. This could be extra good advice for celebrities as well. Because Hollywood is essentially one big show, having beefs with people isn't always the best thing for you and watching two people who hate each other try to have a conversation can be painful as well. Take for example the bad blood between Vivica A. Fox and Jimmy Kimmel. To start, these two celebrities weren't the biggest fans of each other to begin with, but when the actress was on Jimmy Kimmel Live back in 2005, their bad blood started to really boil and it led to the actress being banned from the show. The actress was on the show to promote her movie Missing, but things didn't go as smoothly as planned because as Jimmy made a joke about one of Vivica's friends, it made her upset and she ended up storming off the set, leaving Jimmy to finish the segment without his guest. Later on, he said that Vivica was one guest that he would never have back on the show. At number 9, Bill Hicks. Many times in Hollywood, we see people get in trouble for being too controversial. It's basically the backbone of cancel culture. Well, here's an example of someone being banned from a talk show for being so controversial that their segment was scrapped entirely. Comedian Bill Hicks made a number of appearances on Letterman between 1984 and 1993, but his 12th appearance on the show was scrapped after it was deemed too controversial to be aired. After that, a ban was issued. According to the comedian, Letterman, as well as the audience, didn't seem to have many issues with his set, but it was a show's executives who had the whole thing scrapped. 
This statement has been debated by some because a lot of people still took offense to some of the topics the comedian was discussing. Unfortunately, the comedian never got a chance to redeem himself on the show as he passed away a short time later. Now, number eight, Madonna. It seems as though there's a good chunk of people who really don't like Madonna. There could be a million and a half reasons why she and others do not always get along, but the bottom line here is that not everyone wants to be friends with the singer, especially Piers Morgan. There seemed to be some kind of one sided beef with the singer that, frankly, I don't think she cares about too much, but Piers, on the other hand, had a lot to say about her. Morgan said that Madonna was banned from his program because she is, quote, boring and annoying. He also went on to say, quote, Madonna and I, we've never really seen eye to eye. There was a bread roll throwing incident in London in the mid 90s. There was an incident at a hotel in the south of France at the Cannes Film Festival involving a photographer and a bodyguard. There's been an incident involving a pub owned by her recently departed husband, Guy Ritchie, where my brother was the manager. End quote. If you thought he was done with his commentary on the singer, you thought wrong. Pierce also said that Madonna was too vegan for TV. Whatever that means. Either way, Madonna never responded to all of Pierce's comments about her, so again, I think she remained pretty unfazed by the ban that he had put in place, but clearly the TV host had some pent up aggression there. At number seven, Joan Rivers. Apparently, late night TV hosts Johnny Carson and Joan Rivers had so much beef that he not only banned the comedian from his show, but he also refused to speak to her for the rest of his life. When Carson became the host of The Tonight Show in 1962, Joan was starting to rise to fame for her comedy. She and Carson became a pretty dynamic duo as she appeared in his late night show almost 100 times. She was hired as a writer and even became a guest host when Carson was away, but in the mid 80s that's when things started to turn bad as Joan was upset that NBC never offered her a long term contract. When talks of Carson's retirement began, there was a list of potential candidates of who would replace him and to her astonishment, Joan wasn't on that list. The silver lining there was that Fox later contacted her about having her own late night show and she jumped at the opportunity. This made Johnny really mad because he felt like he was almost being blindsided by the whole thing. This caused them to have a pretty big falling out which led to Joan being banned from her former friend's show. When speaking out about the drama between them, Joan went on to say quote, I think he really felt because I was a woman that I was his, that I wouldn't leave him. I know this sounds very warped, but I don't understand otherwise what was going on. For years I thought that maybe he liked me better than the others. But I think that it was a question of I found you and you're my property. He didn't like that as a woman I went up against him." End quote. At number 6, Kelsey Grammer. I feel like when a celebrity asks for something specific, it should be given to them. I'm not talking about anything material like demanding a cup of ice chips or something. I mean a specific request in reference to the way that they are treated. For actor Kelsey Grammer, he made a very specific request when doing an interview with Piers Morgan, and when that request wasn't honored, there was a falling out that led to the actor being banned from the show. When the actor made a guest appearance on Piers Morgan Tonight back in 2012, he requested that a picture of his ex-wife not be shown. He was willing to answer questions about her, but just didn't want to have a photo of her be aired. Well, Pierce didn't honor that request, and when a photo of his ex-wife was shown, Kelsey stormed off set. The actor's publicist said that Pierce had to take accountability for his actions because Kelsey was so mad about the situation, but instead, Pierce barred the actor from his show. That doesn't really seem like the right thing to do in that kind of situation, but okay. At number five, Jackie Mason. I'm sure we are all aware of how sensitive TV networks are about what kinds of things get aired. Saying some kind of adult word can cause some serious consequences, but what about hand gestures? Well, it turns out that those are also against the rules, and someone had their whole career ended because of it. Comedian Jackie Mason had been working on the Ed Sullivan show for a bit back in the day, and it made him pretty successful. He was given a contract for six appearances, which was set to earn him around $45,000, which is more like $350,000 in today's money, since this all happened back in the mid 60s. Either way, it was a very well paying job for only having to do six appearances. Anyway, his entire contract was essentially ripped up after he got into some trouble for flipping the bird on stage. Jackie was playing off one of the stage managers who was making gestures with his fingers to indicate how much time he had left, but he went a little too far. As part of his little joke, he pointed his finger around the room saying, quote, here's a finger for you, and a finger for you, and a finger for you. End quote. This kind of behavior was not allowed, and so he was booted off the show and subsequently banned. At number four, Artie Lang. When you're a guest on someone's show, the expectation for celebrities is that they stay alert, engaging, and on their best behavior. For comedian Artie Lang, it seems as though he didn't follow through with that unwritten rule and he got banned because of it. Lang had been struggling with substance abuse. 
month. And though he had appeared on Conan O'Brien's show a number of times, he ended up getting banned because the producer thought that he was under the influence of some kind of substance on his last appearance, so they told him that he wouldn't be welcome back on the show until he was clean and could prove it. The studio didn't want to risk anything if Artie kept coming back while he was still using, and so they did it for his own good as well as to save their own image as well. At number 3, Howie Mandel If you watched America's Got Talent, then you know that Howie Mandel and Piers Morgan were judges together. Through the time that they worked together, Howie was known to play pranks on Piers, like using fart machines on him and setting up vending machine blockades. Although Howie thought that this was all in good fun, Piers on the other hand wasn't impressed with his co-workers antics and even going so far as to call Howie the quote, most annoying man that he's ever met. End quote. Pierce didn't like Howie so much that he ended up adding him to the list of celebrities who he had banned from his show. There was some bad blood there, but honestly, after learning about how many people Piers Morgan seemed to have beef with, this ban honestly doesn't even surprise me in the slightest. At number two, Gilbert Gottfried. This ban has to be one of the most pointless bans I have ever heard of because it really wasn't necessary at all. Howard Stern banned Gilbert Gottfried from his show simply because the comedian went on another show. I know, I don't get it either. There wasn't even any bad blood between them. When Gottfried got cancelled after making insensitive tweets about the devastating tsunami that hit Japan in 2011, Howard even came to his defense online, so really no one knows what the motive behind this ban really was. I'm sure it can't really be because he went on another show because that is so absurd, but honestly, we may never know. And finally, at number one, Gene Simmons. I think that we can all agree that Gene Simmons is somewhat outlandish. He's a guy with a lot of big energy and no filter, so when it comes to interviewing him live, you never know what he might say, but you can certainly hope that it won't be too offensive. At one point, the singer was a Fox favorite, making regular appearances on their programming where they would discuss hot topics in the world and would share their opinions on things. They liked the guy and they liked having him on their talk show, but after causing a stir during a meeting at Fox and making some crude comments towards some of the other staff members, Gene got banned for life and it was a hot topic of its own. Some of the things that Gene said to some of the women at the network got leaked and it's not something that you would want to have said to you, let's just put it that way. After all that went down, the singer was not welcome back on their programming and honestly, I can't say I blame them. At number 10, Piers Morgan. It is crazy to think that this person ruined their career because they didn't want to take someone's mental health seriously. TV presenter Piers Morgan had a lot to say after Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's bombshell interview. The insight that this royal couple shared in the interview were full of bombshell secrets and testimonies and also included some serious allegations as they showed the public a new part of the themselves, looking deeper into the lives of Meghan and Harry. One person who relentlessly picked the couple's interview apart was Piers Morgan, and his actions on his TV program ended his career in seconds and also led to him getting cancelled online. During the interview, Meghan Markle opened up about her mental health and how it was affected being part of the royal family, saying that there was once a point after she married into the family that she wanted to take her own life. Piers spoke about this on air of Good Morning Britain and said that he quote, didn't believe a word she said. After Piers made those harsh comments, he started to face massive backlash from all sides as people said that his comments on Meghan's mental health were diminishing and disrespectful. The studio he worked for, as well as Piers himself, started receiving harsh comments and so Piers actually decided to leave his position at Good Morning Britain. He has since refused to apologize and no one really wants to work with him after all of this drama, so it could be that his career is finished. At number 9, Chris Harrison. Bachelor Nation was in fury when a scandal took over the recent Bachelor season. It all started when a contestant's questionable past came to light and fans of the show started grabbing their pitchforks on Twitter demanding accountability. Now when Chris Harrison, the show's longtime host, tried to do some damage control, that's where things really got heated and it did not end well for him. When asked about the scandal involving a Bachelor contestant in an interview, Chris went on to seemingly defend this contestant where he said, quote, we all need to have a little grace, a little understanding, a little compassion. Because I've seen some stuff online, this judge jury executioner thing. I haven't heard Rachel speak on this yet. Until I actually hear this woman have a chance to speak, who am I to say any of this?" End quote. People found his comments to be offensive and insensitive, saying that he was too quick to defend this contestant's actions. Even though he sort of tried to justify his comments, making it so that he wasn't necessarily defending this contestant, the fans still came for blood and they got it. 
After everything was said and done, Chris ended up leaving the show, effectively ending his career after this one talk show interview. At number 8, Sinead O'Connor. SNL is one of the most popular and successful variety slash talk shows out there, and because it's so popular, things can often go wrong with so many people watching and so much on the line for people's careers. One of the biggest scandals to come from SNL is probably the one involving Sinead O'Connor and how she called out the Catholic Church during a performance in 1992 that effectively destroyed her career. On this episode, Sinead was asked to perform a few songs for her newest album at the time, and though she agreed, there was a little fine print to accompany her appearance. Sinead asked to perform a rendition of Bob Marley's song, War, instead of a piece from her own album. That night, she got up on stage, sang the song, changed up the context of some of the lines, and made a bold statement at the end after she held up a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up in a show of defiance against the Catholic Church. She did all this as a means to raise awareness about some of the allegations that were against the Catholic Church because she had personal experience with those who were allegedly hurt by members of said church, and she wanted to fight against it. This stunt angered a lot of people because for days following the performance, NBC received thousands of angry calls condemning them for allowing something like this to happen. Other celebrities like Madonna and Joe Pesci also had some harsh words for Sinead. After that event, no one wanted to work with her ever again, and her career pretty much went down the tubes soon after. At number 7, Carmen. For people trying to make it big in Hollywood and in the music industry, the idea is to get yourself in front of as many people as possible to build up your reputation. So when you're asked to be a judge on a talk show, that is a huge deal, but only if it goes smoothly and for the music duo Carmen, that is certainly not what happened because after a botched SNL performance, their career was over. Carmen, though now disbanded and rebranded, was a music duo who got their start on YouTube by posting covers of a lot of popular songs like Party Rock Anthem and Super Bass. Eventually, they got a large following, leading them to getting noticed by casting director over at SNL. They invited the duo to perform on the show and they sang a couple songs but after the show, when the ratings came in, it wasn't looking good for Carmen. They got some pretty harsh reviews and this completely tanked their career. One critic even said that their performance caused quote, mild auditory distress. They were never really able to bounce back from this catastrophe of a performance and so they eventually faded away, ending their careers. At number 6, Bill Mayer. We should all know by now that language has the ability to do a lot. It can be good for when you're making positive changes, but it can also come back to bite you if you say something that isn't so nice. Some people, however, aren't very conscious of this and their harsh and sometimes offensive language can cause them to face massive backlash and can even end their career. Take talk show host Bill Mayer, for example. On his HBO show, Real Time with Bill Mayer, he dropped the N-word while talking to Senator Bill Sass, and as you could imagine, it did not end well for him. During his interview, the senator told Bill that he would like to invite him to Nebraska and quote, have you work in the fields with us? To that, Bill replied, scoffing at the idea, saying, quote, I'm not a house N-word. After those words were uttered, the fury came from the public, condemning his use of that word. Bill claimed to have been using the word in a joking manner, but that still doesn't take away from the gravity of uttering that word in the first place. Bill was subsequently ripped apart by his audience and even other late night personalities like Stephen Colbert. After this scandal, his career was never really the same because many people aren't quick to forget these things. At number 5, Sharon Osbourne. Talk show host Sharon Osbourne found herself in some hot water earlier this year after she made some comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that not only caused her to get backlash but also lose a friend. Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood got into a heated argument surrounding Pierce Morgan's remarks about Meghan Markle. During this feud, Sharon backed up Pierce's comments about Meghan Markle's mental health and this frustrated Cheryl because she didn't like the comments that were being made about those involved. The two got into a very heated debate and ended with a lot of drama and sparking a conversation about Sharon's ideals. She was called a racist and a number of other accusations came out about her and how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts. As a result of this, the network for their show launched an internal investigation that ended with Sharon being let go from the show. Sharon had been part of the show for so long that her firing certainly altered her career quite a lot. At number 4, Kelly Osbourne. Now we just talked about Sharon Osbourne and her recent talk show scandal, but her daughter Kelly has also been in her fair share of controversies, including one that also happened while on a talk show that kind of ruined her career. During an episode of The View, Kelly Osbourne really missed the mark while trying to claw back a dollar 
Donald Trump. And even though she was trying to diss Trump, she ended up getting in enough trouble herself. Just shortly before this episode aired, Donald Trump, who was at the time only a presidential nominee, was saying offensive things about the Latinx community and how he wanted to deport them. I am sure we are all too familiar with this whole concept. Well, in a very poor attempt at clapping back at Trump's racist comments, Kelly said, quote, if you kick every Latino out of this country, then who's going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? What Kelly was trying to do was defend the Latinx community, but rather than stand up for them, she ended up offending them even more, as her remarks were interpreted as saying that the Latinx community is only good for being housekeepers, as depicted in many racial stereotypes. After facing so much backlash and realizing the gravity of her words, Kelly issued an apology saying, quote, I want to start by saying I always take responsibilities for my actions. In this particular case, I will take responsibility for my poor choice of words, but I will not apologize for being a racist as I am not. End quote. Kelly completely missed the mark on that one and it certainly hurt her career. At number three, Paula Deen. At one point, we all thought that Paula Deen was just a sweet Southern mom who liked butter a little too much, but after 2013, she took on a very different label as she was exposed for being pretty racist following a lawsuit that showed the world what she was like behind the scenes. After being deposed, the truth came out after Paula was asked if she had ever used the N-word and she said yes. This certainly was not good for her image, so she went on damage control to really take the heat off her, but instead of getting things to die down faster, her appearance on the Today Show caused things to get so much worse. Instead of owning up to her actions and trying to clear her name, as most people would try to do in that kind of situation, Paula instead deflected the criticism she was facing and even voiced how shocked she was that so many people were taking offense to her actions. The fact that she didn't even take accountability for her actions rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and just ended up making the situation so much worse for her and pretty much ended her career after that. At number two, James Corden. Recently, TV host James Corden has found himself in trouble with fans after his Spill Your Guts segment from the show started facing backlash with fans. Fans are calling for James to take accountability after he made some comments about some Asian foods that he had on the show because some fans thought this was really offensive. Because the foods that they use in the Spill Your Gut segment are supposed to be ones that you wouldn't want to eat, the fact that some Asian foods like Balut were used and called, quote, disgusting, made a lot of people take to the internet to call for accountability and an apology from James Corden. Apparently, James has been making these types of comments about a lot of different Asian dishes on a few occasions, so some people have said enough is enough, and some have even and created a petition calling for the removal of the Spill Your Guts segment. Since James has been facing cancellation for this lately, do you think his career is in serious jeopardy or do you think this will all blow over without any repercussions? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And finally, at number one, Ellen DeGeneres. The number one person on this list who ruined their career on a talk show is no doubt Ellen DeGeneres. In 2020, we watched the comedian and talk show host fall rapidly from grace as allegation after allegation came out, painting Ellen as a nightmare to work with, among other things. She faced so much backlash from things like the treatment of her staff to comments about lockdown and the Black Lives Matter movement. Because of the events of last year, she lost a lot of credibility and respect in the industry and her show lost a lot of ratings and advertisers as well. She really lost everything and has recently announced that her show will be ending after this last season, making it seem like her career is well and truly over. At number 10, Charles Rocket. Between 1980 and 1981, SNL seemed to be on its last legs. This all came about after there were some changes in staff and Dean Dumanian was promoted to executive producer of SNL after Lauren Michaels decided to take a break from the show. Because of this seemingly controversial change, much of the original cast of the show left, leaving Dean to rehire a brand new cast. This gave people new opportunities, but also made others lose everything that they worked for. Comedian Charles Rocket was one cast member who had their career destroyed on the show after he dropped an F-bomb during a skit. The comedian was closing out the show when he spoke some adult language and since that is a huge no-no, it got him reprimanded and caused him as well as a handful of others to get fired. So not only did he destroy his career, but other members of the cast seemingly met that same fate. At number 9, Jimmy Fallon. Last year, people were cancelling celebrities left, right and center for a bunch of different things. We had Ellen and her backstage drama, we had Leah Michelle and her Hollywood mean streak, and we also had Jimmy Fallon because after a clip of the late night host in blackface resurfaced on the internet, the fiery hordes of Twitter came looking 
for vengeance. The clip in question came from a bit that Jimmy was doing as an impersonation of Chris Rock back in 2000. Because this all came about during the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement last summer, people were extra mad at Jimmy and some thought that his career was over after this. But much like many other scandals online, this all blew over after Jimmy issued an apology and took accountability for his actions. Do you guys remember this scandal and do you think that his career should have been over after this? Let me know your thoughts down below. At number 8, Jenny Slate. Imagine the worst first day you've ever had. Now after I tell you about Jenny Slate's first day on SNL, I want you to see if your first day is as bad as hers because Jenny's first day ended her career before it really got a chance to start. Though she's successful now, her career had been delayed for a bit after she goofed up on SNL on her first night as a cast member. Back in 2009, Jenny got the chance to perform one of the sketches that she wrote called Biker Chit Chat. She knew the bit like the back of her hand, or at least she thought she did because when she went to say one of her lines, she made it a little more adult by accidentally switching up one of the words and dropping an F-bomb in its place. We all know that on network television and especially on shows like this, having adult dialogue is a serious no-no and so when Jenny dropped that big ol' F, it was not good for her at all. After that night, Jenny struggled to fit the show's vibe, at least that's what she claimed to say. The F-bomb combined with some other behind the scenes stuff caused her to get fired from one of the most famous shows on TV and that definitely held her back in comedy for a little bit, but clearly not forever. At number 7, David Letterman. When celebrities get exposed for some type of scandal, it's a big deal and it can be career altering so when David Letterman exposed his own cheating scandal on his late night talk show, things were serious and some didn't know if he would ever bounce back from this bombshell. In October 2009 on his late night talk show, David Letterman exposed his affair and revealed to the public that he had been intimately involved with someone from the studio. He also revealed that the reason why he was publicly addressing his affair was because someone was threatening to blackmail him for $2 million. He then told his audience about the mysterious package he found in his car one day and how his blackmailer had demanded to be paid off in order to keep this information from the public and from his wife. Rather than pay up, he owned up to his actions, but this was still a big deal because it was revealed that his mistress actually worked for him. Because this was a huge story, some wondered what it meant for the future of Letterman's show and career, but after some scrutiny, he was able to stay afloat for a little longer. It didn't destroy him, but it almost did. At number 6, Gene Simmons. I think we can all agree that Gene Simmons is somewhat of an outlandish guy. He's a guy with a lot of energy and no filter, so when it comes to sitting down with him live, you never know what he might say, but you can only hope that it won't be too offensive. At one point, the singer was a Fox favorite, making regular appearances on their programming where they would discuss hot topics in the world and would share their opinions on things. They liked the guy and liked having him on their talk show, but after causing a stir during a meeting at Fox and making crude comments towards some of the other staff members, Gene got banned for life and it was a hot topic of its own. Some of the things that Gene said to some of the women at the network got leaked and it's not nice at all. In this day and age, making comments like that is sure to get you in some serious trouble and for a celebrity that is never good because that can cost you your entire career. At number 5, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody is a super successful actor, but after a scandal while hosting Saturday Night Live in 2003, there could have been a chance that his career would have been well and truly over. Back then, cancel culture wasn't yet a thing, but if it was, Adrian would have had his own over party trending on Twitter. When hosting SNL, the person tasked with being the host that evening is responsible for introducing the musical guest for that evening. On the night that Adrian was hosting, the musical guest happened to be Sean Paul, and Adrian saw this as a perfect opportunity to introduce Sean in an interesting way to say the least. When it came down to introducing Sean's performance, Adrian came out dressed in fake dreadlocks and sporting a Jamaican accent. His bit was called out and was seen as very offensive and uncalled for as he went off script to do this bit, which no one found funny in the slightest. Because this was such an epic and controversial fail, the actor was subsequently banned from coming back on the show. He faced a lot of backlash that for his image for a while, but clearly he's bounced back since then. At number 4, Ashley Simpson. This was the moment that caused Ashley Simpson's career to crumble and things haven't been the same since. I'm sure you all know the story about how Ashley was caught lip syncing during her SNL performance and how embarrassing it was. This was a defining moment for Ashley because she was supposed to be getting her name out there to gain more notoriety and to grow her music career, but after this slip up on the show, Ashley's name has been associated more with SNL fails than with the music industry, which is pretty unfair since she still brushed herself off after that incident and continued forward. Yes, this appearance pretty much destroyed her career, but she didn't let that stop her, which is good. At number 3, Chris Brown. Chris Brown seems to have gone on a journey to turn his life around after the incident that happened between him and Rihanna in 2009. After that moment, the public saw him very differently and the singer was left picking up the pieces 
of his broken career. Things were rough for him in the years following the incident because the media labeled him as hot headed and this wasn't a good look for him, especially when he acted on said hot headedness. In 2011, two years after the Rihanna incident, Chris Brown was a guest on Good Morning America and sat down with Robin Roberts for an interview to discuss his new album and to perform a song from said album. The interview and performance went sort of according to plan, but during his time on camera you could see Chris getting angry after Robin kept asking about his altercation with Rihanna. Chris kept trying to get her back on the topic of the album, but it didn't really work and he got really upset. As soon as the interview and performance were over, Chris stormed off the stage, took his shirt off and threw a chair at a window, causing it to shatter and rain glass onto the street below. This interview made Chris look even worse in the eyes of the public and it continued to affect his career negatively. At number 2, T.I. Back in November of 2019, rapper T.I. was a guest on a talk show podcast called Ladies Like Us Podcast. Here the rapper opened up about his daughter, his relationship to her, and how he monitors his daughter's virginity. Yes, you heard that right. The rapper opened up about how he takes his daughter to a yearly gyno appointment to quote, make sure her hymen is still intact, end quote. A woman's hymen is commonly associated with her virginity, even though there are many other ways it can be broken other than sex, but clearly T.I. didn't know that and after telling a large audience about how he's so concerned about his daughter's purity, he faced a lot of backlash and was cancelled for a bit. Going more in depth into how these appointments go down, the rapper told the podcast audience that he had to fight the doctor to get his daughter's results because it was private information, but even after all of that drama wanting to make sure that things were to his standard, T.I. later went on to comment on people who haven't been intimate saying quote, who wants a virgin? Like really, all that work. And finally at number 1, Kathy Lee Gifford. Sometimes when celebrities are being interviewed, their words can become a topic of debate and they can even get cancelled for it. But here's a case where the person interviewing came under fire and it seriously affected their career and how people viewed them. Kathy Lee Gifford, best known for her time on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, faced a lot of backlash after her Today Show interview with Martin Short caused quite a stir. Back in 2012, Martin sat down for an interview with Kathy to discuss his role in the film Madagascar 3 and during the interview, Kathy kept asking Martin about his wife. What she didn't realize at the time was the fact that his wife Nancy had actually passed away two years earlier after a battle with ovarian cancer. The interview was super cringe because you could tell that with every question about his wife, Kathy struck a nerve, but she did learn about her mistakes afterwards as Martin informed her of his his wife's passing backstage. Kathy's comments were seen as insensitive by a lot of people and even though she says it was an honest mistake, we already know that the public and cancel culture don't really care about that.